Jake from Orlando Park Pass. Tonight I'm here with my friend Jay. Hello. And we're going to be talking to the famous Disney explorer, well, theme park, urban explorer in general, Matt Sansua. What's going on, guys? So as you guys have probably all seen, Matt is notorious for his awesome exploring videos. He's gone to Discovery Island. He snuck into Disney Quest, Body Wars, Cranium Command, Nickelodeon Studios, just to name a few places. And we're going to learn about these trips that he took, and he's going to tell us how we did it. So yeah, it'll be pretty cool. So Matt, to start off, what like who's your biggest inspiration that got you into all of this? Um... Essentially, an inspiration as far as like the island was mostly Shane Perez and his crew. I believe the guy goes by the name of Bullet. He owns Abandoned Florida. Their expedition to the island was what really interested me about how they basically only had photos. I basically was looking for the video and I couldn't find any. So I essentially realized I had to go out and get the video myself. But my main inspirations, obviously, would be Adam the Woo. He's one of the biggest theme park, you know, explorers. So yeah, definitely. Another one is another one is Dan Bell. Uh, he was actually like the first big urban explorer. Someone told me about when they were trying to convince me to get a camera. It was a smaller channel called Florida Urban X. Basically, we got into contact, and he was like, yeah, you know, if you get a camera, we should go film sometime. But I didn't really think anything of it at the time. But, yeah, basically mm -hmm. Dan Bell and Adam the Woo. And then, obviously, exploring with Josh is a pretty big inspiration for me because he was one of the first big urban explorers that I, like, found or came across. So, basically, those three, Dan Bell, Adam the Woo, and exploring with Josh, I kind of try to mix up the styles in a, in a sense, but... Yeah. Pretty early on. So you weren't, you, you you haven't been on YouTube very long. I'd say less than a year, right? Yeah, no, I believe my first upload was the River Country, which I filmed on my iPhone 6. That was eight months ago, about. That's just when I went to go go about the whole situation. So beforehand, were you still, have you always been going on these <clears throat> explorations and going and exploring things? And uh, you just now started to record it? Honestly, no. I mean, I've urban explored in the past, like in seventh grade. I, we used to break into like this mall or like sneak into this abandoned mall in Plantation, Florida. It's called the Fashion Mall. So, I mean, I've urban explored here and again. And where I went to high school, Port St. Lucie, around that area, whenever there's something cool, I'll go explore. But I didn't really ever consider myself an urban explorer, really. So it was really just me wanting to go get see what was on the island and I couldn't get any current footage so I had, ended up doing it myself <laughs> which ended up being a you know I was biting off a lot more than I could chew but I didn't really know at the time okay so let's get into that so how do you get out to the island tell tell us the story um essentially I just go out there really late at night <laughs> <laughs> and paddle over. And I bring my own boat, and I paddle over. Did you bring, like, a canoe or an inflatable raft? It's an inflatable raft, but I don't believe I will be going back for the record. Yeah. It's just, you know what I mean, just saying that. But anyways, yeah, basically just paddle out there late at night. So you show up to... Fort Wilderness, I guess, and you bring your little canoe down there. Are there cast members around, or you're just out there by yourself with your with your friend, and you blow up your raft, stick it in, and then paddle over as quickly as possible? Or were you on the lookout for cast it members, things like that? Um, yeah, obviously we're on the lookout, but we take whatever precautions necessary to stay out of sight, and a lot of the time, you know, we get lucky with the time frames. That's yeah. how it is all the time with me. I get lucky with the time frames and I just go for it. There's a lot of times where I think something won't work, but I end up going for it and it works. Just like mm -hmm. Nickelodeon Studios recently, that's pretty interesting how I got back there. 
So for the island, what gear did you bring with you? Did you have a backpack, clothes, snacks? It's actually funny. I don't know if you guys realized, but the first trip I took to the island, I basically couldn't afford the proper equipment at the time. So I just got some small, like, handy cam type things from a pawn shop because I didn't want to didn't want to go with the GoPro. I felt like there was just too much to it. So I didn't know much about them at the time. So, yeah, we just went out there with a camera gear, a couple granola bars, a couple water bottles, and then we just went out there. It was super, super, like, I was so nervous beforehand, and especially making our way out to the water to where we would launch the boat. We had another cameras, flashlights, granola bars, and pretty much it. So the first time you went out there, did you spend the night or were you just there all day? No, we actually went out in like the middle of the night, about, maybe a little bit later. And then we would, we actually paddled back in the morning once I was done filming, because obviously I needed to film with the sun out. So that was definitely a crazy <laughs> like just paddling back during the day. I don't think I would ever do that again if I were to go back in, in the far future. So you guys land on the island and it's nighttime. Are you concerned about people seeing your lights at all, like from the mainland? Yeah, at first we weren't so cautious. We were on the little maintenance dock and we ended up actually trying to get some sleep. So we would like basically sit back to back on that maintenance dock. And just so we had something to like rest up against so we could just get like an hour of sleep because we were just exhausted from waiting until it was time for us to be able to launch. But <clears throat> basically, I guess, you know, we're using our phones here and again, not out on the dock, but like in the woods behind there. But one of the security guards right over by the ferry, the ferry, whatever you want to call it, station in mm -hmm. the wilderness, he literally was like, driving up basically and parked his car and he walked to the very end of the dock and he just like stood there for a while obviously he was pretty far so we couldn't really see if he was like you know specifically looking at us or if he just does that just because but we were definitely pretty worried that he had seen a flash or something because he was he was waiting at the end of the dock for a long time oh wow but I, th I think that was the first time we went on the island the second time which was like two days later i believe when I ended up getting the better camera, the Canon, and going back, we definitely were sure to stay inside of the woods. And we basically slept inside of the raft. How long did you was, stay there the second time? Um, We got there on, like, you know, middle of the night, early morning. So we had to wait, like, four hours till the sun came up. And then as soon as it's actually, yeah, we had to wait till the sun came up and then then we'd start recording and it took like an hour maybe an hour and a half to record so it was basically i don't remember if it was seven o'clock or eight o'clock you can hear me say it in the video like right when we were about to leave but the the first time i guess we tried to get some sleep just a little bit but we weren't basically we didn't have two boats on the island at that point so we were more concerned about popping the boat so we didn't sleep on the boat. That's why we're sleeping back to back. So I guess we decided we couldn't get to sleep and Chris turns to me and he's like, forget this, let's let's go explore now. Let's just figure out what's going on. Let's just go now. I can't just stand here listening to all this noise and stuff. So Is I'm just like, okay, you know, I'm not uh, yeah, there's all types of noises and animals going on. But anyways, yeah, so I wasn't gonna stay there, like, no, nah, I'm gonna wait here, you, you know be right back i was obviously going to stay with him so he walked away and we went towards like basically i don't know it's hard to describe but anyways we left the maintenance area and just started walking and exploring at night and we started hearing all types of weird noises so initially we thought there was monkeys because we would hear in the trees shit moving and then we would hear like this just weird noise like a i don't know it's so hard to explain it sounded just like a freaking monkey but i you know, obviously there's no monkeys on the island, but it just, it was obviously some type of bird, but the noise that it made, it just really sounded like one. Yeah, that's crazy. So it was, it was definitely, 
it was an experience but we only explored for like 30 minutes before we made our way back so we didn't want to lose our way it's it's massive you you will definitely get lost at night Mm -hmm. it's happened before it must have been crazy to see that this attraction was just completely untouched from the day it closed yeah it was surreal it was unbelievable every part of it was was crazy any any surprises that you were shocked to see or something that stood out yeah in the middle of the night when we were trying to find our way back to like our other boat or whatever on one of the trips, basically we came to an avian way. That is how we basically kind of basically know where we are on the island because there's an avian way right on the very edge closest to the dock, like basically directly across from river country. Mm -hmm. There's an avian way on that side of the island. So that's how we knew where we were. Essentially it was a nice little landmark. Well, this avian way if you look at the one in the video i don't know if you've maybe seen chris's behind the scene videos but under the avian way there's like you can walk straight to the water there's no netting or anything so there, you know there's a little door right under the walkway of the avian way so because me and chris basically carried the boat across more from one side of the island to the other while it was inflated but anyways basically at night we walked under through this door and Next thing you know, there's a huge net right in front of me. And I look up, the net goes like 30 feet up, and I look to the left of me, and it just goes on for like as far as I can see. So I'm like, what the heck? This wasn't here two days ago, or you know what I mean? This wasn't here. You know what I mean? So we basically, I was like, all right, this has to be a different avian way. So I would walk back, and I go up onto the walkway, and I went to pull open the door, but the sign had sunk over the basically it just like lowered over the years i guess it was tilted and it was tilted just enough so that it was like over the the crease of the door so basically it was, the door was jammed shut and the original avian way in the video the door was fine the sign was fine too so i had to literally like i literally had to make sure that it wasn't the same avian way so i like busted the door open kind of just like applied a little pressure and it just like it opened it up basically it moved out of the way uh huh but yeah, so there's two avian ways. I only filmed one of them. That was like a huge shock. I uh, remember another. It. Oh, keep going. Yeah, no. Another, like, really interesting thing that I found was when we were walking. I think it was like the flamingo encounter or something where there's like wooden walkway, but it's like on the ground. And basically, I guess back in the day, it was like water all around it or something. I don't know exactly how it was back in the day, but anyways. Essentially, when we were walking, there was a three-foot stream, like three feet wide, Mm -hmm. a little stream, basically wide enough for me to jump over, and it led into the island. So there was still water essentially running into the island. It was super interesting to see that the canal hadn't – a lot of what was water is now just dried up dirt and, like, just land to walk on. Oh, that's cool. So to see a little – yeah, in the middle of the night to see a little stream, and it it went in as far as I could look. I mean, I wasn't going to follow it in the middle of the night. We had somewhere to be, but – basically you know it was just in the way and i jumped over it was like a three foot little stream and i was like what this is crazy there's still water going into the island it was so interesting to me yeah so before before you started doing like the urban exploration stuff did you have an interest in discovery island and did you have an interest in disney abandoned stuff well not too much really i just like my girlfriend started going to school in Orlando at UCF so I would come up here this was before I moved up to Orlando I moved up to Orlando January of last year and this was around like I'd like to say September or August around that yeah it was about August right and I was basically up in Orlando and I wanted to find something cool to do so I just started looking up like what to do you know and then I started looking up like I think I just looked up like cool places to explore or something and then I just came across Shane Perez's, like, a, basically the blog about how Shane Perez got banned from Disney or whatever for exploring one of their abandoned islands. And I was like, oh, an island. And I was like, it's in Disney. And I looked it up, and then I couldn't find any footage. So I looked high and low for a video on this island, and I can only find video from when it was actually open. So I was like, well, shit, if I can't find this video. Let me go get it myself. Right. But I didn't but I didn't actually go and do it. I was still going to school down in Broward College down south. So mm-hmm. it was until like after that whole semester, then I moved up in January and then I 
went through like a whole semester of school again and then I just kind of figured you know what let me go ahead and get this done let so just go for let me just go for it so do you think that's the reason why you're so willing to you know put your face out there attach your name to it is because you don't have like an emotional attachment to Disney or Universal mm-hmm. you're just willing to really put it out there and see what happens see what comes well, of it well the thing is I knew I wasn't gonna want to hide my identity mm-hmm. because I mean I guess the whole goal was to become a youtuber so obviously right. I had to have you know what I mean an identity so to speak yeah. I mean I I've heard of people that don't really show their face or anything on YouTube, but I mean, I don't know. I just started looking into like urban exploring stuff like that. And I figured, you know, I kind of want to do that. So if you want to do it, go at it a hundred percent, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. I knew that eventually I would catch heat with Disney as far as getting banned, but I mean, I'm not too worried about it. You know, I've only been to Disney, like I've been to magic kingdom when I was like three. And then I went to Epcot in like fifth grade. Other than that, I never really, go to disney too much but so so you're now not trying that to pursue like a career with yeah. disney it's nothing like crazy like that well i mean now that i've learned a lot about disney and that like mm-hmm. i've really like learned about all the rides and what's like open what's closed and i learned so much about it now i'm more upset that i can't go to disney because i know so much more about it now and I'm, it really interests me now so now it's like oh, i'm really feeling it you know especially when people that i've met like when jake from bright sun films he'll come down and sometimes we'll meet up or something and film if there's something to film but now you know he'll go to disney for like new years or something and i can't really go so it's kind of it's kind of a bummer but i mean i know eventually i'll end up reaching out to disney and asking for forgiveness maybe later on when i need to bring my kids to disney but yeah for right now i mean i've really kind of just really dove deep into the whole youtube thing and sacrificed that ability to go to disney right now, one of one of my favorite videos of yours is, is the one where you go into uh, Disney Quest while it's literally <laughs> under construction. How did that one get pulled off? That that one seems like another level because you're you're interacting with people. You're walking right by people. How, well, how did... I did that. I did that twice. So mm. basically, yeah, I have this crazy thing what that happens to me a lot. Even Cranium Command, I did twice <laughs> that I have to like I end up messing up the first time and I have to go back. But basically. Disney Quest, that was at a point where I knew I had to do something to really keep keep the channel going because, you know, I was kind of relying on these theme park things at the time. But so, you know, I was really and I was on a time schedule. My The person who really helps me out and gives me a lot of information is like a freaking Disney historian. He basically he knows so much about this stuff. He has books about it. Like and I know he's like way younger than me, but this kid is. He definitely knows his shit about Disney. He helps me out a lot. He was telling me I'm on a time schedule. So at first I didn't think I was going to be able to get it just because of basically the time frame. But eventually I got word that it wasn't going to be knocked down right away. So I ordered, I went on Amazon real quick and I ordered a a vest and a hard hat and some glasses and a lunchbox. And then I went to Walmart, (laughs) got an orange shirt and some jeans and some boots and I was just construction worker out, like completely just head to toe construction worker. And it was like official equipment too. It's pretty funny, but yeah, I ended up, I think I like, I think I pulled up one night and it was just so like packed. I don't think that was the night I had the construction stuff. When I came with the construction stuff, basically, cause I had scoped it out like weeks prior and like narrowly escaped getting caught by like cops. Because, like, they, I guess they sent the cops after us or something. It was weird. Like, we left the parking garage. We went out of the down ramp instead of the up ramp. And I'm pretty sure that's the only reason they didn't catch us. Because we were on camera just looking, walking around the parking garage for, like, 45 minutes. Just looking at Disney Quest. Like, looking at different vantage points and stuff. So, oh, so they probably right thought we, we were, like, a terrorist. Right when we got onto the highway, all we see is a cop flying down. And that's happened to us multiple times on different occasions. But lights blaring and everything but anyway so basically i walked in with a construction suit and i walked through that first gate through that like employee entrance and if you listen closely in the video you hear somebody on the radio like the guy's pretty much saying like yeah we got a guy back here he's like i don't know it kind of cuts out after that but he definitely says yeah we got a guy back here walking and and then it kind of cuts out 
But basically, he was probably the only person that really noticed me. I walked up, walked up the ramp, tried to open the door. It was locked. So then that was like the side door. So then I had to walk back past these people. I really just walked past like I belonged there. I didn't say anything to them. And I walked around the whole thing, like all the way around and found a nice little blind spot in the corner. Basically, like the uh, basically the entrance to the employee like hallway but inside of the shopping center place. So I was right on inside of the corner and I just jumped the fence right there. And I was expecting there to be lights on inside and like workers in there. My camera was literally inside of the lunchbox and I cut a hole in the lunchbox that have the lens barely poking out. So essentially I was assuming there was going to be workers in there and lights were going to be on. Well, it was pitch black and nobody was in there. So that's why the first Disney Quest video I posted before I got arrested, it was a lot darker. So then I ended up going back the next night and there was an armored truck there and it was really late at night and he was walking into the shopping plaza and I was about to walk in as well. So I really didn't like that situation and I just left. And after that point, I guess they were surprised told to be on the lookout for me and the car that had been dropping me off so once that happened I basically went back the day after that and I dressed normally assuming that I might get caught I didn't want to be dressed up as a construction worker because that would have gave me a whole bunch of more problems but basically I went back again and this time I actually just jumped the fence right there there's like a big gate. There was a big gate in the construction fence and it kind of connects to like, I don't know, I think it was like a concrete part of the fence or whatever. Anyways, I basically jumped the fence right there in the parking lot. There was a little tent where the security guards were behind. So there was a blind spot. They couldn't really see me. So I basically just jumped on a trash can and then helped jump up onto like the really tall and jumped over. But yeah, then I basically filmed it with a flashlight, but, but I don't know if you can tell in the video, the flashlight kind of dies like the fourth or fifth floor so uh just some people would say you know what you're doing is bad some people would argue that it's good do you think what you're doing is you know would you say it's helping disney see you know oh hey this is a problem it's so easy for you know this one person to just get by film all this um would you say what you're doing is like a disservice or a service for disney for disney eh. Yeah, it helps them lock things down more, but obviously it's they don't want people seeing that, you know. It's supposed to be the happiest place in the world, and what I'm showing is the opposite of that. So yeah. it's definitely not good for Disney. It's good for the fans. Yeah, that's basically what I do it for is all these people that want to see, you know what I mean? That's a lot of my viewers is these people that want to see what's going on. That's how I was. I wanted to see what was on the island. So, I mean... So the second time you went to Disney Quest, you were in your street clothes. And did you get caught inside of Disney Quest at all? No, I got caught outside. There was nobody in Disney Quest. But it was weird. The first time I was there, they were actually bringing the machinery around as I was leaving to the front so that they can forgot what they were doing. They were knocking down like the front doors or something. But anyways, yeah, no, I when I got caught, cause the first time I walked out of the construction fence, and, you know, there's a big wooden construction fence around the property. I walked out of the construction fence. There was a construction worker, and he went to sit down on the bench that was on the corner. And I was already basically crossing the street as he sat down and turned around and saw me. So he was kind of just like, he just had enough time to, like, I wasn't within talking distance, essentially. I was walking across the street, and I was, you know, making my way into the parking lot as quick as I can. So he didn't say anything to me. But the second time, <coughs> basically, there was a disney security worker on a bike and he was just standing there on the corner and i kind of just said well, you know what i mean i'm going for it and got out of the fence and walked and he was like hey excuse me sir um what, what were you doing back there you're not supposed to be back there but he already knew because they were supposed to be on the lookout but i guess he asked i was like oh i got lost mind you it's like two three in the morning <laughs> Oh, I got lost. She's like, uh, no, there's no way to get back there. How'd you get back there? I was like, oh, I got lost, somehow wandered back there. She's like, no, there's no way to get back there. I was like, yes, there is. There's an employee entrance right over there, and I 
guess I tried to take a shortcut and I found myself behind this fence somehow. There's a big gap in the fence. And he was like, oh, I forgot what he said, something. And then I was like, man, I'm going to be out of here in like five minutes. And I already started walking away from him. And he was like, okay. Yeah, that's all he said. He was just like, okay. And he got on the radio and I started walking away. I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to be out of here in like five minutes. So I guess, you know, he wasn't going to grab me or anything, of course. So once he... He knew who I was at that point. So then he got on the radio, and at that point, I was walking away. I'm in the parking lot where they had a whole bunch of construction equipment. I went underneath the tunnel, and the person who dropped me off didn't happen to notice there was a Ford Focus right behind them on the road. I mean, it's 3 in the morning, you know, but they didn't notice it was a Ford, whatever. It was a Fusion or Focus, but it was an undercover sheriff. So, but they had been told to be on the lookout for that specific model car. So I wish they would have told me because I would have just hopped in a bush and then probably met them outside of Disney Springs. I mean, they might have gotten pulled over and questioned, but I would have been way outside. You know what I mean? I would slowly work my way out of Disney Springs to the biggest shopping center and probably went to like McDonald's or something. I would have just walked along the hotels and this and that. But yeah, basically. The cop passed right by the car, I hopped in the car, and then they pulled us over. And what I did was I slipped the SD card into the door of the car and I put the, the camera in my backpack. I had an ex, extra SD card anyways, and then I put the backpack in the back seat. So when they when they pulled us over, they were basically just like, driver, step out of the car. And then they walked up, opened my car door, and they were like, get out. Like, okay, like, what's your name? Matthew St. Cyr. Oh, put your hands behind your back. I was like, oh my gosh. And then, yeah, they charged me with felony burglary. And the, the Disney worker, the lady, she was so pissed. She she said she was going to make sure I get a felony. And then the actual Orange County Sheriff, they're like, oh, so you think all this YouTube shit? You think it's, you think, you think all this, whatever the, whatever the fuck this stupid shit is you're doing, you think it's worth it? You're getting a felony, this and that? He was like, a it's like, you go to school? I was like, yeah. What school do you go to? Valencia? It's like, yeah, we're going to call them. You're going to get kicked out. I was like, oh. And my freaking, I, they actually dropped my whole schedule. I don't know why I didn't ever go back to try to add the classes. or anything. I actually added some classes afterwards, and they didn't say anything. But it was weird. All my classes got dropped. It was super weird. But I was able to add classes and then still attend those classes. But it was mm-hmm. super weird. But, yeah, they arrested me. They were kind of just freaking taunting me. And then they took me back to Disney Quest. The lady came up to me and read the same paper. She's like, I have to read this to you again. <laughs> so she read the freaking, the trespass, the same trespass thing that they read me at Epcot. <laughs> oh, wait, so you, you already got banned before this? Yeah, no, I got banned twice. Okay, this. so we'll tell the story next, the Epcot one. Oh, yeah, that's a whole other freaking... Okay, so th- she starts to read you again. What happened? So she starts to read it again. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. So she starts... Yeah, 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 yeah. She starts to read it again. They bring me back to Disney Quest, and they start going through my bag, and they're taking a long-ass time. Like, all I have is a freaking camera, a mechanical pencil, an SD card, and maybe a flashlight. So they're going through my bag for a long time, and I'm, like, starting to get worried. I'm like, what are they going through my bag so long for? So the lady, like, comes back to the car. She's like, I was like, hey, um, are you guys wearing body cameras? She's like, uh, yeah. I was like, are they on? She's like, no. I was like, okay. So I was like, oh, my God. What are they doing in my bag for so freaking long? But it ended up being nothing. But, yeah, they charged me with felony burglary and then misdemeanor trespassing. And by the time the state had looked it over before my court date they dropped the burglary charge and all i got charged was misdemeanor trespassing but i mean mind it's a construction zone in florida trespassing in a construction zone that's a felony so i don't know if they just jumped on trying to get me a felony so quick they gave me felony burglary but really i just jumped the and i didn't even up any doors like i literally slipped through like they they had a a stairwell door propped open they had some so I literally stuck my shoulder in and literally squeezed in. The only thing that kept me from sliding in was my backpack. So I just shimmied my body inside and I didn't even open any door. 
and on the other side they had a whole like i guess it was the back door or garage drive they had something torn out so they just had a curtain hanging in front of it so you could walk in and out through a curtain so basically the state looked it over and the witness who was the disney security guard he his statement he basically said exactly what i told him i was like no i just walked through an, an opening in the fence and slipped right in and he basically put that on the affidavit or whatever it is the basically the report mm-hmm. so on the report it just says the suspect basically Walk slipped in. right in through an opening in the fence that's exactly what it says and it said point that was point of entry it said point of exit a door in the wooden construction fence this is when the disney security guard made contact with the person yeah so yeah that's i guess they just jumped on that so quick so they didn't charge i don't know it was weird that's crazy yeah but i mean i've i find it worth it i wish i would have been smarter and bought a brand new flashlight so you could really see what's going on in there like the roof and everything because it's super dark in there oh, the video turned out awesome don't worry about that yeah, no, I didn't know how people were liking it, but I guess it was all right. But. So then your other Disney exploration was uh, Body Wars and Cranium Command, right? Mm-hmm. And that's... Yep, yep, yep. Is that the third and final, or that was the second Disney exploration? That was my second one, or the third one, because I went to River Country. But yeah, Cranium Command was something else, just the whole day when I knew I had to go back and do everything that I did the day before, and climb up the freaking catwalks and catwalk and this and that that was crazy to me it was just being in the park and like having something on my list like what i have to finish and not even like riding the rides it's just like it's an unexplainable feeling it's it's pretty crazy so how do you get into wonders of life um i walked right in i believe the first time no 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 yeah yeah the first time i walked right in it was pretty empty there's maybe like one worker sitting on one of the benches in the food and wine area but i just stayed to the edges and i walked in and went to the right and i just walked right through and went into cranium command but the whole video was out of focus because i guess i wasn't paying attention it was so dark in there so that's why i had to go back but the second time i basically walked over the little rope right in front of it and walked up that thing and by the time I got past the fountain and I was pulling around the corner, I had realized there was a, a teenage girl, or not teenage, but, you know, like a young adult female that was walking up behind me. So I ended up sitting down and I made a phone call and she had a camera as well. I believe she did have a camera. Or no, 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 she didn't have a camera. She just had a backpack, I think. But anyways, so she just, yeah, she just had a backpack. She walked up open like you know manually open the electric doors and walked right in and so she was going to one of the lounges so when i walked in i waited like five minutes i walked in and this time i went to the left because i knew that the lounges were to the left so i walked down the ramp went to the left i actually walked past two security guards who were old ladies and one was on the phone and one was just patrolling but i looked like a worker because i had the big camera around my neck and i I don't remember exactly what I was wearing, but I just basically, you know what I mean? I wasn't looking around. I wasn't acting like I wasn't supposed to be there, you know? Like, I walk in like I freaking own own the the place, place, essentially. So, like, basically, I walk in like I'm supposed to be there, and she didn't say a word to me. I said hi to her and everything, and I walked around, made my way around, and then went back into Cranium Command and Body Wars. So, how do you get caught? Basically, I went into that, I've been, the first time I went into the lounge, which is in Wonders, the MetLife VIP lounge. First time I went in there, the girl was a nice little girl. She let me out. You know what I mean? Like a younger girl is what I'm trying to say. Like she let me out and she was very nice to me and she just escorted me out. The next day when I should have been focusing on Image Works or Interventions West or, you know, anything else, should have been focusing on that. I was just like, you know, kind of thinking on spur of the moment because there's a way to go straight from Body Wars up a stairwell and get into that MetLife Lounge. That's how I kept getting into there because I just went up this little like stairwell. So I went in there again and I was filming and then you could see the lady. She was like, hi, how's it going? What are you doing? You know, she was just acting really friendly. And, you know, we get into the elevator and then I turn off the camera. I'm like, yeah, sorry about that. You know, I just take videos and she's like, oh, no worries. And then next thing you know, 
instead of taking me to the first floor in Wonders of Life, she takes me to the very bottom floor. And the elevator door opened up, like, on the complete opposite side, like, behind me this time. And next thing you know, I'm outside in the back of the park, and I'm looking at a fucking bench with, like, a little overhang and, like, just, like, a little place where, like, workers would hang out on break, essentially. And I'm like, what the heck? What, what, what are we, where are we? And she's like, oh, yeah, no, I think we need to talk to somebody about this because, you know, we were very nice to you yesterday, and here you are again. Oh, you know it was the same here. lady? No, different lady. Mm-hmm. But I guess she was obviously told about it. So she was an older woman this time. And uh, basically, she goes up to this, like, custodian who's sitting there on her break on the bench. And she's like, oh, can you help me find security? Oh, I think we need to find security. And the custodian's like, uh, yeah. She gets up. She's like, well, what do you do? And I was, like, super quick to just be like, I was like, oh, they have a beautiful lounge up there. I was just taking some photographs. And the lady's like, yeah, I think we need to talk to somebody about this. And so the custodian helps her. Like, they walk around the corner, and they see a security guard. But the security guard hops on his golf cart, and they're like, security! And they're trying to call him, but he didn't hear them. They were a good, (laughs) I'd like to say, 50 yards away, maybe. So he was a good little walk down. Maybe, you know, 30 yards. Who knows? But anyways, he hops on his golf cart and drives off in the other direction, didn't hear her. So she's like, come here, stay with me, stay with me. And we walk down, we're walking towards where he went. And we maybe walked like 20 feet. And I was like, yeah, I'm not staying with you. She's like, oh, stay with me. And I just like kind of smiled at her. I was like, no, I'm not staying with you. And then I kind of like started jogging. And then I just sprinted real quick. And I started, I hit the corner and I sprinted. And she started screaming. She's like, (laughs) so I just kind of like start sprinting through the back lot and you know, the kid that's been telling me all this info, he's telling me there's a security office right back there in the back of Epcot. So I sprint down, like, I'm maybe, like, a parking lot length. Like, literally, like, it was maybe, like, who knows, like, 100 feet, 150 feet. And I just sprinted it. And obviously, she wasn't going to be able to keep up. I'm way quicker than her. And I just started walking because I seen cars coming. So I started slowing down and walking fast. And I see her trying to keep up, like, fast walking. But she's a good distance. So I pull around this little, like, like a portable, like a, like a school portable or whatever you'd see, like just a little portable yeah. office building, and I pull around the corner, and then I find uh, like a, a back alley type thing that leads into the park, so I snuck back into the park. Oh, no the way. First, yeah, the first day I went out of stairwell, I had to sneak back into the park or something like that, and there was a guy standing there, so I showed him my one-day pass. I'm like, yeah, I got lost. I got out of here. I don't know. Uh, I need to get back in. He's like, oh, I'll just go in. The second day, there was nobody down the alley, so I literally just snuck right back into the park and left. Where's the alley? Um, to the right of Wonders somewhere. Has oh, to so, be like, to the right by of Test Track? I'm not too familiar. I'm sorry, I couldn't uh, tell you. But if you're, if, you're, if you're facing the front of Wonders of Life, it's to the right of it. I know that much. So. And then when did they, how did they end up catching you and banning you? A few weeks later, I went back with my friend Chris, and, you know, he's never been to Disney, so I figured, you know, I'd show him some cool stuff, and, you know, we'd have a cool day at Disney, but really, I was going to try to film Imageworks. Yeah. I was more focused on Imageworks, trying to sneak up the stairs or whatever with a group of people, but we ended up getting to the gate, and, you know, I wasn't really thinking too smart, so I went to the very edge of the security checkpoint where there was a shorter line because I didn't want to wait as long. And there was a sheriff standing there, and then there was basically a a higher-up Disney worker who would wear, like, a plaid collared shirt with, like, some khakis and some sunglasses and a radio in his ear. And he was just standing there, just, you know, standing, looking at people coming in. And I went to the corner, and, you know, nobody recognized me. Obviously, the video hadn't been any big at all. I don't think they knew about it too much. So... I walked in, but then this time, they saw the flashlight, and they were like, oh, no, you can't bring this in. So they bring over somebody. They're like, hold on. We got to call somebody over. Another security guard comes over. He's like, oh, yeah, you can't bring it in because it has a trigger on it. It's like a trigger flashlight. I'm like, okay, no problem. He's like, yeah, just go put it in your car. I'm like, okay, cool. Here's where I messed up. I started walking directly, like, backwards. Just started walking towards, like, where they would drop you off on the tram. I didn't walk underneath. Like, I didn't. Basically, I didn't turn around and make a right and walk straight into the parking lot where I came and parked. I basically just started walking along the front of the park, like where they would drop the buses off or whatever. So basically, 
next thing you know, Chris was like, yo, you know, somebody's following us, you know, and this lady was following us on a radio. And then we turned around and I was trying to cross the little driveway where the trolley like drops you off. And the security guard was like, get out of the, the pathway. And I was like, get out of the pathway. So we get out of the pathway and then we were going to go to the crosswalk. And then he stops me. He's like, oh, do you guys have ID? I was like, no. He's like, what do you mean you don't have any ID? I was like, I don't have any ID. What do you mean what I mean? I don't have ID. He's like, oh, come over here. Come over here. And what I should have done at that point was just leave because I guess they can't really grab me or anything. I should have just left. But, you know, I stayed and I freaking walked over and then, you know, they call over the sheriffs that were by the security checkpoint. And, you know, the sheriffs come over real quick. They're like, what they do? What they do? And they're like, oh, you know, we just have reason to believe they've been he, – He's been backstage taking photographs. Of they, they, they have flashlights. Like, that's well, ridiculous. Their whole yeah, reasoning. Yeah, because of a flashlight, they stopped me. That's why. I, if I didn't bring a backpack or a flashlight, I would have probably still not have gotten caught. I mean, I might have gotten caught at something else by now. But anyways. Yeah, Disney Quest. But anyways, so. Basically, you know, the cops are like, oh, what do they do? What do they do? So then pull us over. We're waiting. And. They didn't even really know about the island yet, I don't think. So I was super nervous. And the cops are like, oh, who drove? And nobody said anything. And I didn't have a license. And if they would have you know, found out I was driving, they would have took my license like pretty much forever. So <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> and, you know, Chris didn't say anything at first. And they're like, who drove? And then, thank God, Chris freaking stuck his neck out for me. He was like, I drove. <laughs> so... Basically, they're like, oh, okay, you sure? And then nobody said anything. They're like, oh, so somebody's lying. Who drove? And Chris was like, I drove. So basically, they freaking, they have us sit here for like literally 20 minutes. Yeah. And they, they, they're they doing paperwork in the cop car. We're sitting here for 20 minutes. They're just looking at us. One of them standing there waiting, just looking at us. And next thing you know, so funny freaking chris calls this guy colonel sanders this is an older gentleman with you know he had like a little like a top hat or whatever and you know he pulled up <laughs> telling you he pulled up in this golf cart and he was stepping out before it even stopped like he slammed on that brake to put it in park and he was already out of the golf cart he pulls up to us he comes up he goes what's your name boy <laughs> oh man so you know we tell him our name this and that and they come back like 15 minutes later. He's asking us a couple questions. They come back 15 minutes later. They're like, okay. Another higher up in a, you know, collar chair comes up. He's like, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to tow your car. Uh, do you have, you know, you're going to get trespassed. We're going to tow your car. Do you have money for a taxi to catch out of here? I was like, no. I don't have money for a taxi. What do you mean? <laughs> They're like, oh, well, um, well, I was like, why are we towing? You know what I mean? I was like. Why are we towing my car? He's like, what do you mean? That doesn't make any sense. Nobody's getting arrested. Let me tow the car to my apartment where it belongs. You know, I'll call the tow truck. Oh, we're not going to sit here and babysit you. I was like, well, you've been having me sit here for 20 <laughs> minutes just so you can give me a fingerprint and take a photo of me. I didn't even want them to take a photo of me first. But then I was like, oh, let me just be compliant. Yeah. So, yeah, I was, I was basically giving them our job. I was like, what do you mean? You've been wasting my time sitting here for 20 minutes. I could have had a tow truck on the way. And so the cop and another cop comes back. He goes up to Chris. He's like, oh, your name's not coming up in the system. I'm going to run it again. If it doesn't come up, I'm taking you in. Oh, <laughs> Chris wow. is literally like, what? And he stands up. He's like, well, what, do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? They're like, he's like, what's your name? And then he's, like, trying to, like, spell out his name. He's like, oh, Christopher uh, D. Carswell. He's like, C. And, like, Chris stands up and starts, like, screaming, like, shouting his name, like, like trying to spell it. He's like, D, D, D. <laughs> like, people are looking at us like crazy. People walking by. It was the most embarrassing thing. And What's Colonel I Sanders doing? Over to Chris. I ended up leaning over to Chris. I'm like, yeah, I'll bail you out in a couple of hours. Don't worry. <laughs> so, yeah, basically that... It was a big, like, problem. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll call my own tow truck. So I'm on the phone with, like, several tow trucks trying to tell them, like, you don't know where Epcot is? I need the address. I'm, like, looking up the address while I'm on the phone. And eventually the older gentleman that Chris had named Colonel Sanders decided he was, like, he just told the cops. He was like, let him drive. The cops were like, oh, 
let him drive, all right. And he ended up walking us out to the car. And I was asking him about, like, you know, what they caught me filming and this and that. He's like, you know what you were filming, this and that. So I was basically trying to get him to tell me if they knew about the island. But I guess they didn't at the point. I was like, well, why are you banning my friend Chris? He's never even been to Disney. That's messed up. I don't want him to get banned for something that I did. And they were like, we have reason to believe that he should be banned, too. So I'm guessing that was our first trip to River Country when Chris got caught Mm -hmm. by the security guard. Yeah, that was an experience. So you got to meet Colonel Sanders, and you got a free escort out of the park. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I was just (laughs) asking him about a whole, a lot of, like, the old stuff that you read about Disney and this and that. And he's like, oh, I don't read any of that jibber-jabber online. You know, he was basically like, I don't buy into all that bull crap online. I was like, okay. (laughs) So they were not nice people? No, they were, they were very nice. (laughs) You know, they just had to, they had to do what they had to do to, yeah. you know, to keep the company in line, essentially. Yeah, they were, they were very nice. The people at Disney Quest, on the other hand, they were very upset with me. So, like, I even asked the guy, I was like, oh, what's your name? He's like, oh, my name is, you know, John so-and-so. He was like, I'm the lead security for, or the manager for Disney Quest or some, some shit like that. The head manager for Disney Quest. I was like, well, why am I getting charged with felony burglary? He's like, oh, well, that's up to the police, and that's all that I'm going to say about this. And I was just like, okay. Like, I wasn't going to argue with him. You know, I'm in the back of a cop car with handcuffs on. But anyways, yeah, no, for the most part, the people at Epcot were very nice, you know. They were, yeah. They let us go, you know. We talked it out, figured it out. And I'm sure they could have told the cops to do whatever they wanted with me, but... Uh-huh. Yeah, no, he was basically telling me, he's like, we have a... we Because he knew I was photographing and stuff to you know obviously put on some type of platform so he's like we have a team of individuals or the three of them search for things you know and i was like oh yeah what do they search for you know what are they what are they finding and he was like oh well their job is to protect the company and its assets and that's all i'm gonna say about that i was like okie dokie sir (laughs) yeah pretty crazy yeah no they were cool though you know i mean so uh, can't say I have anything one... negative about them, you know. It's yeah. I have like closer. one last question, um, just for me. I don't know if Jake has any more. Um, at the end of the day, would you say like I guess the clout or whatever? Would you say it was worth it? It's essentially it's you know these videos that are really causing your channel to uh, get kick started. Um, would you say it was uh, worth it? Would you do it again? Um, I don't really know exactly what you mean by clout. Like I kind of like roughly vaguely know like the definition of that but i mean it's just like, saying, do you, like yeah do you I think, think it was worth it like me i think me getting into youtube and the start that i have gotten into and the people that i've met i'm very grateful for that and i'm yeah. I think it's definitely worth it you know what i mean like it's a sacrifice i'm gonna have to take but i'm glad i was able to dive deep into this and now i'm meeting new people learning new things and like i'm actually about to i'm on my way up to west virginia and new york right now in an rv to go do a collab with some of the biggest urban explorers in the community so i'm pretty i'm satisfied with what you know what i mean how everything's played yeah. out essentially yeah even I, though you I, know i had to I had to unfortunately get arrested for it and you know this terrible mugshot online but <laughs> other than that i mean i think it was worth it i really want to take youtube more seriously yeah okay so last one we'll, we'll hit this quickly nickelodeon studios tell us um, how you did that one yeah It was the same day I did Triceratops. I wasn't able to really film <clears throat> too well. Like, I did film certain spots, you know, because in Adam Lewis' videos, the clips are very brief. And, you know, it's kind of hard to match up some of those spots. But the first time I only filmed in the main building, I didn't get into Sound Stage 19. But then, thankfully, I was given a little tip about... Uh, Basically, uh, I think it was whatever the Impact Wrestling. That's what it was in Soundstage 19. So that was very helpful. I ended up just hopping on the road right away and kind of hesitated before walking in. But I walked in and literally it was just as soon as the wrestling thing ended, they were like, security guard came up to me. I was still in the bleachers because there was a family sitting on the bleachers. And he asked them, oh, you guys are staying after? Okay, you got the tickets. Perfect. And I didn't even think they showed it to him, but he asked me, he was like, oh, you're staying after? 
for the VIP or whatever for the photographs. I was like, yep. He's like, you got the ticket? I was like, I wasn't going to lie to him. What if he asked me to show it to him? I was like, nope. He's like, all right, you got to go. I was like, okay. I walked around the freaking wrestling arena thing and went into the VIP line. And I saw the line building up and I skipped like three, four people. So I blended in. And then I just waited there for like 20 minutes. And there was even a security guard standing right there watching all the photographs going down. So like, he definitely had clear view of me walking backstage. So I waited in line for literally like 15, 20 minutes. And I felt like he was looking at me a lot, but I guess he was just looking at everybody. And then a buddy of his came over. But then like another one of his friends came up, they started talking and I was like, oh man, I was like, well, I'm just going to go for it and not even look back. You know, I'm not going to look like I'm not supposed to be doing it. I'm just walking, you know, I'm going to walk back there like I'm supposed to be going back there. And sure enough, I walk back and I go backstage, Uh, you know, I was rolling obviously, but I turn around and I'm waiting, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm thinking the security guy's going to come. And he doesn't come around the corner. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm on the phone, too. I'm like, yeah, he didn't come. He didn't come. And I'm like, I don't think he's coming. And, you know, there's a wrestler back there, but he didn't really say anything to me. He was just on his phone or whatever. And then, like, the owners of, I guess they were the managers of Impact or something. Like, they were, like, higher-ups for the TV situation. They saw me walking around filming, but they didn't really care. They didn't say anything. But eventually I found myself standing in an empty sound stage, And I was, at that point, I was up on the catwalk already. But... Yeah, I found the elephant sign, and I found the make sure this elephant door is closed, where it's a Nickelodeon font, and I found the other Nickelodeon sign, where it's like, you know, compliance is mandatory or whatever for employment at Nickelodeon. They still have that hanging up right by the entrance of the soundstage. Mm-hmm. So I was glad I was able to get back and film everything. So I ended up filming the filmed everything. I went up on the catwalk. I filmed all that and. It was just me and the janitor in there. He didn't say anything either. So, oh, so he saw you in there and he just didn't care? Yeah, everyone backstage saw me and they didn't care. (laughs) Matt Sansois. I'm going to add his link to the description of his channel. That was an awesome interview. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, Yeah, the, the stuff was pretty crazy. Jay, what did you think? exclusive um i think it's really uh really cool some of the stuff that he was talking about um you know i'm not gonna act like i think it was the coolest thing in the world because i think some of it was pretty reckless um i don't condone the activity that went on um it's you know when it comes down to it super cool the fans get really awesome video we get stuff we really wanted to see but um you know they were unauthorized. They were in unauthorized places. He wasn't really supposed to be there, so I can't really condone um, the video or anything. But I think it's really cool um, some of the stories he had, um, and I think that this should really be a lesson too. Um, anyone trying to think of doing this, um, don't do it. Don't try any of this stuff you heard at home. Uh, wait for someone else to do it, um, because <laughs> there are people willing to do this. And you know, like Matt was saying, he he didn't come from a huge background of loving the theme parks um he you know wanted to become an he's an aspiring youtuber he wanted to grow his channel and he did just that so um if i were any of you guys that are even considering one bit doing it don't take this as an example he was banned he was arrested you don't want that going on for the rest of your life um that stuff's permanent so at the end of the day it's cool that the videos are out but don't try it at home yeah so but let matt do it you matt He's a very awesome guy. It's cool that he came on and talked to us. But Absolutely. I wouldn't do what he did. I'm going to let him do that. Leave it up to the professionals, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it up to the pros. Okay, so we're going to end it at that. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs>